All right, another video here where we are going to start off with a question. What is the voltage difference between points one and two in this circuit? Is it zero volts, six volts, or 12 volts? If we look at the circuit, we see we have a 12 volt battery, a resistor R, there's point one, we then have an open switch, we have another resistor R, and we have point two. So what is the voltage difference between points one and two in this circuit? Zero, six, or 12 volts? Pause the video, think about your answer, and then come back for the explanation. So the correct answer here is C, 12 volts. And this is one that a lot of students get wrong due to a couple different misconceptions that we'll go over here. So one misconception is that students see this circuit with two resistors and they think, oh, it's a voltage divider. So remember voltage divider we've seen in a previous video where we have some voltage V in, two resistors R1 and R2. You have your voltage V out, which is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 V in. And students see that and go, oh, the two resistor values are equal. So that means that this fraction is gonna be one half and V out will be one half of V in and that'll give you six volts. But that is wrong because the voltage divider doesn't have an open switch in the middle, right? This analysis and this equation applies to two resistors connected in series, not a circuit like this where you now have an open switch or a break between the two resistors. So this equation does not reply and not apply. This is not functioning. This is not functioning as a voltage divider. So that is why answer B is wrong. Again, if students just glance at this quickly, see two resistors, assume it's a voltage divider and ignore the switch. That's why they might choose B. However, in my experience, most students will actually choose A due to a misapplication of Ohm's law, and here's why. Students will look at this and see the open circuit and then correctly know that the current through this circuit must be zero. You can't have any current flowing through an open circuit. And then they go to Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. So if they'll assume, okay, the current is zero, so the voltage must be zero, right? Voltage is zero times whatever the resistance is, that doesn't matter then the voltage is also zero. Ohm's law is just telling you zero equals zero in this case. And the problem is that this is a misapplication of Ohm's law, okay? Ohm's law doesn't apply to an open switch. Ohm's law applies to resistors and voltage is measured between two points in a circuit. And we are specifically asking about the voltage difference between points one and two here. So to calculate that, we can calculate the we can apply Ohm's law to the resistors, but remember that Ohm's law is calculating the voltage drop across an individual resistor if you know the current through it, okay? It's not just, oh, current is zero, therefore voltage is zero everywhere in the circuit. That's not true. We still have a voltage source. So let's start with the voltage source and then kind of go around the circuit clockwise and calculate our voltage drop. So first, you know, we have previous videos defining ground or where we define usually define zero volts on the circuit. We're going to define the negative terminal of the battery as zero volts. So we have a circuit with just one battery. We usually define the negative terminal as zero volts. So that's the same as point two. So we know point two is at zero volts. Again, remember way back earlier in this series, we learned that these lines just represent zero resistance wires. So this is all one equivalent point here, even though I drew that <laughs> zero volts over in a different spot. And then on the other side of the battery, we're gonna have 12 volts. Okay, so this is our voltage source. We have to have a voltage across that by def definition. So that means up here on this end of this resistor, we also have 12 volts. Okay, now this is where the correct application of Ohm's law becomes important. The current through this resistor is zero. That means the voltage drop across this resistor is zero. So that means the voltage over here on the other side of this resistor at point one is also 12 volts. Okay, so if you have a resistor with zero current through it, the voltage drop across that resistor is zero. The voltage on both sides of that resistor is the same. Okay, so we have 12 volts here. That's obvious because of our battery pack. The, the jumper that part of students have difficulty with here is that you also have 12 volts here on the other side of this resistor, okay? We can kind of do the same thing going in the other direction here. We know the current through this resistor is also zero because of the open switch. We know we have zero volts on this side of this resistor. The voltage drop 
over this resistor has to be zero because the current is zero, so we also have zero volts there. And what did we care about in the original question? We wanted to know the difference between points one and two. Well, point one is at 12 volts, and point two is at zero volts, so that is where we get our correct answer. The voltage difference between points one and two is 12 volts. So if you still don't believe me, because I've had students who have a really hard time coming to terms with this, they think that, okay, Ohm's law, the, volt, the current is zero, so the voltage just has to be zero, and that applies everywhere, so the answer has to be zero volts. Let's look at an even simpler version that just has one resistor. So we're gonna have a battery with, let's call it three volts this time, and a one ohm resistor, and then an open switch. And I am asking about the voltage difference again between points one and two in this circuit. And I know again that the current I has to be zero. And if I look at my voltages, I know the voltage down here, which is equivalent to point two, just drawing in a different corner of this line, that zero volts because I'm going to define the negative terminal of my battery as zero. I know that the voltage up here is three volts because that, again, by definition is the voltage drop across my battery. So I know so far that down here, point two is zero volts. This point at the top of my battery is three volts. Now I just need the voltage at point one. And again, the temptation is to look at the resistor and say, okay, I'm gonna apply Ohm's law, current is zero, therefore voltage is zero, therefore the voltage at point one is zero. But that is not correct, okay? This equation gives you the voltage drop across this resistor, and the drop is three volts minus whatever that voltage is. Okay, applying Kirchhoff's voltage law, or that voltage is add in series. Okay, so the voltage drop across that resistor is zero, therefore the voltage at point one, it's three volts minus zero, is still three volts. Okay, so the voltage here is also three volts. So when I ask you about the difference between the voltage at points one and two, or the voltage across this open switch, the answer is three volts, not zero volts. So you see, this is basically the same problem. The previous problem just had an extra resistor here, but that turns out not to matter. Actually, neither resistor matters. Really, all we're doing here is measuring the open circuit voltage of this battery. So if it helps, you can just forget about the resistors. If you measure the open circuit voltage of an ideal battery, then yeah, you would just expect to measure whatever the battery voltage is. Okay, so if you add resistors in there, and you're talking about the ideal case where we have infinite impedance or resistance of our measuring multimeter, and say so you can measure this ideal voltage, we cover that in a previous video, then adding these resistors or their values doesn't change anything, you are still just going to measure the battery voltage at the output. So that was an awful lot about resistors. We have several dozen videos where we have only been talking about batteries and resistors so far. There are some other topics that you might see in an intro, yeah, might see in a intro circuits course that I skipped over here, like um, Thevenin, the Thevenin equivalent circuits or Norton equivalent circuits. I might cover those in later videos in this series. But for now, we are going to move on to a new circuit component, the capacitor.